No. It's a hangover. It feels like people never stop partying from Saturday. We party from Thursday. And then when does it end? Never. Oh. Okay. So oh. I heard this is like the... <laughs> What's good, y'all? It's the Duma Shots React, and we're back with another video. Who we got today, see? Today, we are back with another American reaction. Yo. Super excited about this video, guys. If you're new to us, and we're new to you, make sure you scroll down, hit, hit that, that subscribe button, button, and turn on the post notification bell because we're, we're on the road to 100K. And we cannot get there without you guys, all right? Join the family. Without further ado, let's get into the video. Welcome to the Brian. In this video, you'll witness the dynamic. Why do they call it chicken dust? I don't know. What do you think? Dairy. What I've had in the past is nothing like this. Delicious street food of Johannesburg, South Africa. I'm going to pair that with pe pedo. Poto. Pedo. It's probably not that. Is, is she schooling him? <laughs> She's schooling him on this one. Stand up. Let's get it. Our first stop in this cross-country South African food tour brings us to the city of Johannesburg. Salud. <laughs> a city of over 5 million and the second largest in all of Africa. Oh, welcome to South Africa. <laughs> Here, the iconic okay. street food has influenced countries all over Southern Africa, and I'm going to try them all. Here you have a bunch of different stuff you can eat it with. Five different options, right? Is that five or six? I think five. Are you asking her? Imagine. I do believe it's your store. <laughs> Mm. From the giant beef head smiling. If you drink this, you become a bear. Do you have bears here? Do you want one? To some of the most oh, ah. <laughs> succulent, meat dripping barbecues you'll find anywhere. Would you finish this whole set? Yeah, in a month. It all starts here. This neighborhood we're in right now, it's got a lot of character. Sure. Tell me about Sundays in Johannesburg. Oh my Because I'm wondering if what I'm witnessing on the streets is something that happens every day. Obviously, Saturday, people went out partying and they're trying to find Babala's cure. Do you know what Babala's is? No. It's a hangover. It feels like people never stop partying from Saturday. We party from Thursday. And then when does it end? Never. Oh. Okay. So I oh. heard this is like the perfect drinking food. This is called the smiley. It all starts with a cow head, sliced down before cooking. Now, I had this before when I was in Namibia. I think it was a goat head or a sheep head. But when I ate it, then it was actually smiling at me. Sure. But here it's just, you know, it's cut up, it's on a plate. The only difference here is cow. So you can't put a cow on, how, wait, how is it going to fit? The head is too big. That's a good point. <laughs> There's different types to make it, but the original way to make it is boil it. Salt, if you want to add spices, you don't, actually. You add spices when it's already here. Chili beef seasoning. Best thing in South Africa. And peri peri sauce. Different. Smiley okay. usually pairs with putu. The recipe is cheap and simple. Start with corn flour and add just a little bit of water. I've seen something similar in different parts of Africa. In Tanzania, they might call it ugali, except for this looks like a more like dry version of it. This one yeah. we cook with a fork. Cook it up until it becomes fluffy. Finally, the dish isn't complete without a potent, savory cup of hot broth. You're going to pour over your meat just so it goes down smoothly. That's what a season is got to be. Let's do what we have to do. Pair that with the poto. And then you're going to pick the one that you want, mm -hmm. and then you're going to go in. Oh, you already went for it. Oh. I had to wait. No, no, don't put it up. <laughs> don't tell them better wait. We just gotta eat, gotta eat. The funny chef level. Try it out. And? Well, and? Mm -hmm. She's a chef, actress, and a comedian. Boom. Wow. Thank you. Born and raised in Pretoria, nearby Johannesburg. What I like about eating faces. It's a very <laughs> <laughs> what I like about eating animal heads is that every bite's a little bit different. I understand why you kind of have to pour the stuff back on. It's like all the flavor has boiled out of it, so you pour the flavor back on. You pair it with this. This is really dry. I'm not used to it. But, but if you eat it with some really soupy meat, it kind of balances out. My question is, okay. is Johannesburg a street food city? Definitely. I come from Pretoria. We so far, so far, he's being very bluntly honest. Mm -hmm. I love that. Yes. I don't want nobody sugarcoating these videos, trying to right. make it sound like they're trying to win the people over. Mm -hmm. My man is in the heart of where he is, and he is trying to be as honest as as possible. I yes. like that. I like it as well. I'm trying to see, like, what would we compare this to? You can't compare it. I feel you can't compare it. I don't know. I can't think of anything that this would be. I don't, I don't know. It's different. It is what it is. Yeah. It's his own unique dish. Yeah. Come to Johannesburg for street food. We have 11 different languages. We have different cultures. Everybody is just trying to mix their cultures together to see what works. And that's what you get in street food here in Johannesburg. Do you know what I, I think like we should that. mix together? Like what? Some hot sauce. Well, that's what we call a transition, kids. There's your, your bear juice over here. Oh, what kind of a seasoning is that? Yep. Do you know um, what's in there? It's chili beef seasoning. Chili what do you beef. think? Before it tasted like 100% beef, now it's like 110% beef. The beef is so much more beefy. It's pulsing. Very nice. How about that hot sauce? Let's go. Mm. Mm. Do 
what I mean? Very spicy, but extra sour. Lots of vinegar in there. That's very addictive. Yeah. It's juicy, very, very heavy, and salty. I can see why people, when they're a little bit wasted, mm -hmm. want to come here. Cheers, guys. Boom. Salud. <laughs> How do you feel telling people to cheers when you're not offering them meat? Oh, yeah, yeah, That is offensive. <laughs> okay, hold on. Give them is a little it surely thing. just looking in the bag? Mm -hmm. All right. <laughs> Our next stop brings us to the bustling GHB market, a mix of commercial buildings and outdoor vendors. Peppered throughout the crowd, you'll find purveyors of street food magic, frying bread, roasting meats, and handing out hearty portions of protein. First on my list, a Joe Bird classic. Chicken dust. Why do they call it chicken dust? Because I think... I don't know, what do you think? <laughs> You're the local expert. Turns out chicken dust ain't about the chicken. It's about the dust, or the seasoning, the seasoning. they put on it. Yo, a blend of yo. dried parsley, garlic yeah, powder, good. oregano, thyme, cayenne pepper, and black pepper. Dust it yes. with chicken it. and grill it over charcoal. Halfway through, slather on barbecue and finish grilling. When it Wait a minute. Now somebody said in one of the videos, it was like, do not compare it to barbecue. How dare they? That sounds like barbecue to me. That's definitely what we do. We put it on the grill, we season it, put it on the grill, and then we want to add some slap your mama or some barbecue to it. You yeah. know it's going to pop Yeah, up. you add the sauce like at the end so the sauce can like really become one. Come on, man. You know, one with their chicken. Now we know food. Mm, mm, if you mm, like mm. food, if you like food, go to our family channel. Check it out. You know it. People here love meat. Street food, everybody wants meat. Why meat and not just more carbs or bread or, oh, you know, something vegetarian? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. like it's a bunch her. of flavor. Bro, it's, it's, it's her and it's him. Their yes. chemistry is like, I don't know what it is. It, Them together, bro, I like they're it. vibing. They're yes. vibing. That, that chicken look good. It does. Look at that. Who taking us here when we come? Gotta be one of y'all. Besides, when you first bite it. The dusting? Mm -hmm. It's super savory. The meat is fatty, it's juicy, yeah. it's dark meat. And sweet. But yeah, a little bit sweet. Speaking of meat, we're gonna do something I've been wanting to do for a long time. I've seen it in other countries around South Africa. I'm talking about the bride. Oh, the bride. bride. It's an Afrikaans word that literally means barbecue especially an open outdoor grill meant for frying pounds and pounds of animal protein. You can eat it standing up or sitting down, day or night, alone or with a group. Later today, we'll be meeting some real braai masters. But first, a dish only reserved for Sundays. We call it seven colors. Black South Africans, mostly we know seven colors. Every Sunday, we go to church, we come back and we cook this and it sits the whole week. Traditional Give me seven that. colors that include good. rice as a Give base and for the protein, chicken or beef. Then an array of vibrantly colored sides like that this. It's actually several colors, mm. but because we are gangster, we call it seven colors. Right. So is this seven colors though? How many colors do you count? Well, how about you name the colors? Green. Yeah. Why do I sound like I'm in preschool? Green, red, brown, light brown. Okay. <laughs> yeah, light I'm brown. Fine. That was fine. Sure, but you should add the little. Okay, yeah, uh, there's sure. sub colors. Seven, seven. Let's round it up. It starts with sliced red, green, and yellow bell pepper, white onion, and red onion, all stir fried in olive oil. Add shredded Ooh. carrot, some seasonings, and beef stock. After a few minutes, add in boiled spinach and finally, cream of mushroom. I'm making Next, this. That look good. I'm making chicken. this. I'm making this. Sunday, mm -hmm. I'm making it. The big we seven. What do you call it? it? The seven? Seven colors. The seven meal. colors. We're getting that seven We're colors. We're making it. Look, this look good. I need good. that. You feel me? We're making it. Put it in my life. I'm excited. Look, I'm over here just... Saliva. <laughs> no, real talk. The food looks amazing, yo. Yes. Like it really do look amazing. I've seen dishes on camera before, but this one is looking really like yeah. I like it. I like it. Backyardish. Mm -hmm. I need that. The beef. We're going with ox liver. It's stir fried in a wok along with peppers and onions. Hit it with a little bit of secret seasoning and a portion of the not so secret Al's chili sauce. The liver and veggies pair with pop, the most commonly eaten softer preparation of corn flour and water. On the side, salsa and cabbage. So, so you, you grab the pop and then you're going to go? That's a lot. I don't want to mess up on the meal now. I mean, it, it, you do got a lot of work to put in. I don't want to mess up on the meal. I'm out to study. I, I'm just saying. Watch people on YouTube, okay? So they did that. They did yeah, that. how long does this take? Because, look, Hello. I know food, but, but I mean, I never... You do know some food now. Yeah, I never attempted... Uh, African dish before, but I got to do this. I mean, we cook big dishes before, so I feel like this wouldn't be too complicated. We know the, 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 we know the what, simplicity what, of this. What you call it? The, the powder? Cauliflower. Powder? That is not cauliflower. <laughs> Corn flour. Corn flour. And water, I think he said. Yeah. That is, well, I, I need to get that right. Yeah. <laughs>
whatever you wish. So I'm picking up the spinach. I'm guessing they threw in some tomato and carrot. Mmm. Mm hmm. I like the carrots. It gives it a little bit different texture. Yes. What else? Let's go for the cabbage. Now, I'm curious if these are all going to taste similar, like have some kind of a uniting thread. They won't. Mmm. <laughs> oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. It tastes a bit fermented. It tastes almost like sauerkraut. Let's go for the salsa now. Okay. The heat is there, so be ready. I'm looking forward to I heat. Like I haven't had anything too spicy yet. Ooh. Ooh. There's no water. At all. <laughs> Really deserves a seat in hell. Um, <laughs> <laughs> is that spicy? Do you not think it's spicy? I think it's like a four. I mean, it's pleasant. I don't need for it to be painful. So, I'm not trying to give childbirth with no painkillers oh, over here. <laughs> for the protein, we could have gone with fried chicken. Instead, right here, we have the ox liver. Mm, cut up from the inside. It's a little bit gamey. Like, it's got some personality. Mm. It's a bit intense, but pretty soft. I like they didn't overcook it. Mm, oh, it's really nice. Hey, I, I just want to say, don't let the name scare you when you're trying new dishes out yeah. for the first time. Yeah. Give it a shot. Eat it up. I'm talking to you exactly. Because when we I'm go out, yeah. and we go eat some of this like octopus and this uh, clam no juice octopus. and all that stuff. You I'm gotta not, not no listen to the name. Juice. You gotta taste the texture. You gotta eat the food. Well, it, 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 it well, has personality. Exactly. So let it, it be. Personality. So be, let it be personal. Uh, I don't know about that. All to that. your reality, I'm preaching. You are, <laughs> but. We'll see. We try everything in our life at least once. You can't complain about something unless you try it once. Y'all. I'm going to try Tom everything Stamper. once. Except, Tom Stamper. Except for octopus and oysters nah. and clams and tripe. I'm going to continue. Tom Stamper. I'm going to continue. Yo, you heard it. Different colors represent the different flavors. The protein, yeah. Look, anybody can get fried chicken. We already know fried chicken is good. Okay. But it's fun yeah. to try the oxtail. It's a bit gamey, but when you mix it oh, with all the oxtail. other flavors in there, smooth. I want you to know. Here we go. You drive me crazy. Yeah. And I want you to know. You are my lady. Now y'all know that song is copyrighted. How did how Y'all y'all done sent y'all sent these songs and y'all know they be copyrighted. Y'all be putting us in a bad yeah. cross. Y'all do. So don't get don't be looking at us on the video. Well, we gotta stop like, the song. And then we blow it down. Yeah. And y'all be getting these. mad at us knowing. Sure. <laughs> Just Man. around the corner. Take a few steps down the street. And you'll stumble upon a food stall that has customers lining up as yeah. early as 4 a.m. What's the most people you might serve in a day? More than 100. Is this something you've been doing your whole life? Seven to eight years ago. At first, it was just me and my mom. And then as time goes on, we're like, okay, now this is getting serious. We need more people to come and help us. Yeah, that's right. Uh, that's right. These are called fat cakes? Fat cakes, yes, but you can say maguena. That looks stuffing like that looks good. Aguinha, or fat it? cakes are treasured treats enjoyed across the African continent. It requires just one ingredient all-purpose flour turned into a dough, shaped, and fried in hot oil. I had fat cakes when I was in Namibia. When I had this, I don't think I had anything with it, but here you have a bunch of different stuff you can eat it with. What are some of the more popular ones? White liver, acha, snowfish, special garlic. So what's on our plate right here? Acha and white liver. What is acha? Dried mango mixed up with spices. But I've heard that acha can be kind of off-putting. Did you say pudding? <laughs> is that what you said? Yeah, sorry. I'm leaving the show, guys. Cut. Oh! You just kind of rip it in half, right? Yeah. yeah. And then you put liver. Oh, so it really is. Yeah, like you got, you, it's you it's just, for, just put one. Oh, just put one. You was everything. No, the thing is it's spread, so just put one. One and a half? Just put one. Sure. Okay, one and a half. <laughs> he literally put he one and a half. Food. Oh yeah. Mm. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's nice. It's got a bold oh, flavor. I don't know. I'm trying to figure out the acha taste because the liver is so strong. The acha makes a difference. If you eat this alone, it's gonna be a bit dry, and with the oil, the spices, it infuses every flavor that you put in it. It's absolutely stunning. It's a bit mm. sour, and I can taste the other spices in there too. It's a nice mix with the liver because the liver is very bold. You remember how old you were when you first had fat cakes? No, I don't. It's a South African thing. Everybody has this in the morning. Yeah. You don't feel like making a sandwich, and it's easier. You say because you can make it in bulk. You know you're gonna eat for the whole week. Oh, you make it at home? Yeah, but I juice things up. You juice it up? I do. <laughs> <laughs> I'm curious how it works here. Now, I think some people who aren't familiar with street food, they might assume that someone just takes a table, they fold it out, they plunk it down, and then that's their spot. But this is all real estate. You pay rent there, right? Yes, we do. How important is it to find the right space? Very, very important. You cannot just go and be like, I want to stay here without checking anything. You know what? Yo. That is smart. Yo. Because where we're from, street food isn't really popular it'll be more of like a stand like a snowball stand a po boy stand like a you know you like, know what like always that. been a good street food for me what a good basket of fries yeah yeah like boudin a really good, is a street a food. Really good basket of boudin, boudin um crackling some good old crackling what else do we have that's street food some good old funnel cake funnel cake that's fair food you still walking <laughs> 
<laughs> you still walk if you gotta walk to go get it turkey leg yeah but I mean okay so like a she pays of... rent there no nah, I feel like yeah so I feel like that's smart like we don't have anything like that but like again it would be a stand or a a food truck mm. but it's nobody like set up how they are and if she's letting other people use it as well, then she's getting her money back. As no, she's 100%. paying. Oh, she's just the owner of everything. She's leasing that space. So nobody else can set up shop in that space. I like that. I like that. I think yeah. that's genius. You can see the street, street man. Down there at Park Station, this road, everybody who goes to train, they use the street. Mm. I gotta say, what I've had in the past is nothing like this. It's a completely different experience. I was actually waiting for that. <laughs> yeah, look, she like, she like that. <laughs> Welcome to the Briar. Rain or shine, people are out here. This is a spectacle. A giant parking lot. On the periphery, there are tons of grills and barbecues like this. People, they come here, they sit down, they order a ton of meat, and they drink a bunch of booze. It's my kind of place. To my side, Mazondi. Is that right? Thank you. In this historically complicated country, Bry is one thing that brings everyone together. People from every background partake. This primal act of roasting meat over a fire is something everyone connects to. And it's an essential part of South African culture. We're gonna get everything possible here. The beef, the organs, the sausages, and maybe- Okay, so I can see a little difference between how we barbecue and how they bry. Mm -hmm. So, like, our barbecue, it has this flame, but it's not like a, a big flame like how theirs is. It's not as consistent. It's it's a little higher. Our, our um, grill is a little higher up on the, um, over the pot. Right. I mean, not pot, flame. No, over the, you... coal, the coal and everything. Right. Yeah. And then we just smoke it. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And we throw little extra things in there to make the, the flame pop off. You know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? But they look but like they not... just, yeah. it's steady. Mm -hmm. It's nice and steady. So they're getting a real good smoke to it and oh Lord, Jesus <laughs> you know what shout out to her bro because look at all this meat that she's laying out mm -hmm. the management she has to do yes. all the people that she's serving yeah. she's working a big job right now yes i see some sausage on there i some see bacon, some chicken, some chicken. You chicken. Saw bacon? yeah i think that's bacon. bacon i mean i know bacon when i see bacon yeah we don't put bacon on the barbecue for us though but they're doing it today yeah they cooking it up. Everything going on the grill. 40 on the side. I love that people here in South Africa, at least in Johannesburg, they don't mess around with the beer sizes. You might be asking yourself, well, Sonny, why are people getting so wasted on a Monday at 2 p.m.? I don't know. Why not? <laughs> Before hitting the grill, the meat is seasoned with barbecue spice and peri-peri chili sauce. Is beef one of the more popular proteins in this country? Yes, religion-wise. They don't eat pork, so we all strive for beef. When it comes to braai, gas grills are forbidden. A proper braai should bacon, utilize though. local hardwood, adding bacon. distinct flavor to the meat. Braai. What are you looking at? This looks incredible. I think Ooh, we got it all. There's kidney, that. there's heart, there's liver, there's beef chunks, and then the sausage too. Would you Take it back with your calves, bro. Yeah, Let y'all eat that. I'm gonna try the kidney. Please, break me off a piece. What she said? The kidney. Mm. Oh, the kidneys are great. Slightly gamey, but I like it. I'm gonna throw back some raw onion. Oh, again, bro, he said some raw onion. They're tearing it up. They're doing it like I've never done it. Um, yeah. It's all about the personality of the dish, how they cook it up and how they serve it. Mm -hmm. You can have something that can scar you, literally. A bad gumbo would make you not want to eat another oh, good gumbo. You feel oh, me? So, for real. If y'all come to the United States, don't eat a gumbo nowhere other than Louisiana. You heard I it. don't care what nobody say. Yeah. Yeah. A bad gumbo will have you look. Looking bad. Look, looking bad. Looking bad. Looking bad. <laughs> the governor of Louisiana <laughs> just called out a state last week. Come on, man. It's In the real. New, New York Times, something, somebody had tried to make a healthy gumbo. Gumbo ain't meant to be healthy. What? We're going to go. We're going to keep going. Oh, okay. Keep going. My bad. Mm -hmm. When they're cooking, they don't ask you if you want it rare, well done. No, that's not how it happens. That's my experience pretty much every time I go to Africa. Not a lot of medium rare. Do you know why that is? When they see blood, it reminds them of a party. Really? No. Jesus Christ. <laughs> that's so intense. Let's try the liver. Oh my God, this is awesome. Is that? My what is that? Oh, that's, that's gotta be hard. You go for that. I'll go for this. Mm. Bingo. I like that they've taken the heart and they've kind of cut it thin so it all cooks evenly through. That is a beautiful piece of meat right there. Let's try this beef up. All right. Yeah, they got real protein. The is to get it hot from the grill. So it's real, and juicy. Real, real and then protein. To keep it kind of tender. And then the sausage, too. Puravors. Puravors. Yes. 
Borebos is an Afrikaans word for a sausage that originated here in South Africa, and they take it pretty seriously. Government regulations hold that Borebos must contain at least 90% meat, usually beef, and it can contain no more than 30% fat. Mix in South African seasonings, and you've got one of this country's most incredible meat experiences. Oh, oh. Mm -hmm. That's undeniable. Oh, Lord. Oh, my God. Super meaty, juicy, perfect balance between protein and fat. It's so delicious. And it's juicy. And there's tons of spices inside. Mmm. Oh. Stop. I love this. We're about to have me in my kitchen with fire to the roof. <laughs> Dang, I'm doing some up in there talking about some. Y'all got this. Hey, y'all got it looking real right. Yeah, that's nice. Y'all coming correct. Yeah, we know food now. We love Bro, us some look, food. Look at that. Look at that. Look, look at, at it. I posted it at a good mm. point, too. Look at that. Mm. Look at it. That's what I'm talking about. Because there's nothing better than fire, meat, and then something that gets you a little bit drunk. I mean, this around the world is like a beloved type of experience. You know, in Korea, essentially you'd be doing the same thing, but you're going to be cooking it at your table. It takes slightly different forms and variations depending on where you go. And here you're outside, you're seeing them grill your food and then just bring it straight to you. This was an incredible experience getting my first taste of South African cuisine with you. It was a pleasure. Thank you. Oh, welcome to South Africa. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Hey. Wait a minute. Should we continue? Let's see if we Let's continue see we got... getting some food. Best ever food review show is a small team of All right. okay. creators. So that's the video, man. That was nice. That was some this good food. This video really had me turned. This got me excited for the trip. For real. <laughs> We're going to be eating good. <laughs> Sleeping too. A lot. Yes, yes. Obviously, because, yes. oof, Lord, once you get one, I know you can't get enough. Uh-huh. Man. Yes, this was a nice video. I'm glad that he did this video because there's literally no good videos about south african food yeah they here. had it down they held yes. it down on this one yes so y'all did so we hope you guys enjoyed this video with us like this video subscribe turn on the post notification bell we have enabled our super, super thanks. thanks if you like support the channel that way as well as our join feature to become a vip mm -hmm. member of the channel sending your reaction requests through our description box below we'll see you soon peace <laughs>